Cambridge the largest sector of medical research and health science in Europe. Is responsible for some of the most innovative medical breakthroughs. Two hospitals Royal Papworth and Adam Brooks. At Royal Papworth, senior consultant David Jenkins is doing a risky procedure. David believes if you stop being ambitious, there won't be new treatments. During the operation, David must stop the patient's heart and drain every last drop of blood from their body. If you examine for all the usual tests, the patient would be temporarily dead. Pulmonary endarterectomy to remove life-threatening clots from the blood vessels in the lungs. The full name is pulmonary endarterectomy, shortened it to PTE. In the UK, they are the only hospital who performs this surgery. David is a world-leading expert in the PTE operations. One of only four surgeons in the UK who performs it. One in 20 people have serious complications or die from the PTE procedure. For Shelley 54 it is her only option. She went to the hospital because of a swollen leg and she couldn't breathe. The MRI shows she has a clot in the lung. Her air type of pulmonary hypertension means she can't dissolve the clots stuck in the blood. Vessels in her lungs. Over time, the increased blood pressure will cause so much strain on her heart, it will be fatal. Shelley has clots in over half the branches of her pulmonary arteries, which carry blood to the lungs. To remove them, David will work on one lung at a time. First, he must open the pulmonary artery where it enters the lung and remove as many of the large clots as possible. However the branches deep in her lungs are so tiny, they must be completely free of blood for him to see and remove the clots. He will use a heart-lung bypass machine to drain all the blood out of Shelley's entire body. David will have 20 minutes to remove the clots before Shelley must be refilled with blood. Then repeat the process on the other side. David will be assisted by one of the few anesthetists in the country with experience to do the PTE operation Carmen Valkanov. He says if we don't push the boundaries, not many other people would and there are a lot of patients that would not be offered surgery and we will give them a chance. David needs to be confident in his abilities so does the team in him. He saws through her breastbone and opens the pericardial sac to expose the heart. David puts tubes directly into Shelley's heart to attach to the bypass machine. Shelley will be drained of blood so they now need to protect her brain. They use the bypass to cool her blood and bring her body temperature down to just 20 degrees almost half its usual temperature. To allow the brain to survive. During the circulation, every last drop of Shelley's blood, all eight pints of it, is drained into the heart-lung bypass machine. Her heart it's not beating and no blood is flowing into her brain. Seven out of ten branches in Shelley's right lung are blocked by clots. David has just 20 minutes to clear them. The cold will protect her for this amount of time. With three minutes to spare David has removed all the clots from Shelley's right lung. Now they can refill her body with blood and, and get ready to remove the clots in the other lung. Pre-op scans showed that only five branches are blocked in this lung. In theory, that should make it easier. David's view in the artery is already being obscured, so the blood is gone but more work to do against the clock. After 18 minutes he was able to finish and bring her back to normal body temperature. Addenbrooke's Hospital and Rooker others, a serving army medic and orthopedic surgeon developed a new procedure which would give hope to thousands of patients. A new operation it's very exposing. It's putting your reputation on the line. Andrew wants to give cancer patients whose hips and pelvis are being destroyed by tumors the chance to walk again. Help by the team. Andrew has developed a new procedure to get them back on their feet. It's called the Harrington Plus. The procedures that Andrew is doing a lot of other surgeons would not necessarily either have the experience to do or would not necessarily have the confidence to do according to Moog I. They are risky. 
The procedure has been made since 2016 but Andrew the only one who has done the procedures. Just 15 times. Peter 76, he just had an archaeological dick. Four weeks ago he collapsed at home. He was told that he had a fractured hip and cancer. Peter has prostate cancer that spread right across his pelvis. Cancer is too advanced, too advanced to be cured. Andrew hopes to give Peter back his mobility and independence. The cancer has spread into the top of his femur. First his pelvis needs to be strengthened by a special metal plate which binds weak bone to strong bone not affected by cancer. This is the plus part of the procedure that Andrew has devised. In the second stage, the cancerous hip sockets and ball joint will be replaced with a prosthesis steel but to help support it, a scaffold of four metal rods will be inserted into the pelvic bone that's already been reinforced by the metal. Plate into the pelvic bone that's already been reinforced by the metal plate. With risks of blockages forming in the lungs arteries and, and heavy blood loss, this is surgery still in its infancy. Andrew will have a team of 15 people supporting him including two anaesthetist, eight strong surgical team, a registrar, and pelvic surgical fellow, Mukai. A corona mortis which means death vessel. Orthopedic surgery is internal human carpentry, using all the things that a tradesman would use. Once secured, the special shaped plate should bind together Peter's disintegrating pelvis. It's a brand new type of plate that was the key to making. Designed by a team of surgeons and engineers, the plate has an unusual three-dimensional shape, combining two plates in one that wrap around the edge of the pelvis. Andrew finished fitting the plate. Second stage of the operation putting in a metal scaffold and replacing his hip joint. Andrew first needs to cut away the cancerous spore joint at the top of his femur. Then he will screw four 7-inch metal rods through Peter's pelvic bone. These will act as a scaffold to support the pelvis, already strengthened by the plate. Finally, he can give Peter his new hip by inserting the prosthesis into his femur, then fitting the ball joint into a newly created socket. Anesthetist Ganshyam Biyani is having to give Peter blood transfusions to stop his blood pressure dropping too low. The average body contains 10 pints of blood. Peter has lost a quarter of his already and is continuing to bleed faster than they can replace it. But despite Peter's precarious conditions, Andrew has already removed the head of his femur, he must place it or Peter will never walk again. He needs to replace the supporting rods into the pelvic bone through an incision in Peter's abdomen. Senior consultant anaesthetist Ronan O'Leary has come to help. If the volume of blood circulating in Peter's body drops too low, he will be at risk of a cardiac arrest. With Ronan closely monitoring Peter's vital signs, Andrew must now drill the scaffolding rods into the pelvis but he's finding it. Difficult to find strong bone not affected by the cancer and it's taking him longer than expected. He was struggling to get the third rod into the right position. The rod is finally replaced however Peter's bleeding is so severe he has lost more than half his blood volume. It's becoming critical. Peter has gone into peri arrest, the state just before full cardiac arrest. He does not have enough blood to pump around his body. Everyone became hyper-focused. A 15-strong emergency response team of doctors and nurses are now in theater, trying to save Peter's life. Giving him adrenaline, Ronan is transfusing large amounts of blood into Peter's veins as quickly as possible to get his heart beating properly again. However, the team must complete the operation if he's to walk again. Andrew still needs to insert the artificial hip joint into Peter's femur, cement it into place and then get the ball joint into the socket. All of this will put additional strain on Peter's body. Peter hip is finally fitted in place. Five months after Peter's operation, his cancer became more aggressive than anticipated and passed away. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.